Okay, today in this month's podcast for the month of September, I just want to complain, you know. Um, many of my friends have asked for my thoughts on the privatization firestorm in Zambia. Uh, I just want to complain uh, about the ineptitude and the poor quality of our public discourse in the Zambia. Uh, many years after independence, our public discourse has not... Um, uh, really improved. Uh, in the last few days, there is a firestorm now on, pri on the privatization program uh, that was carried out by the gov MMD government of the Republic of Zambia uh, 20 to 30 years ago. And that is the key uh, talking point for a country in the 21st century uh, that has taken up all space in the media, private and public and social media. I just feel sad, you know. Um, I feel sad about um, the lack of uh, foresight and the lack of insight, the lack of quality and aptitude of, of, of our public discourse just among our people. Um, I feel sad about that. Uh, you know, right now the country of Zambia has failed to resolve the problem of mass unemployment for the last 25 years. Today's college graduates. Uh, can't find a job in their own land. And, and the way for the current government to resolve the problem uh, of an, mass unemployment is to launch government fish ponds and government uh, gardens in Inchelenge, uh, where my mom uh, went to secondary school in the mid-70s. Uh, uh, that is the answer for mass unemployment. And it, in the last 10 years, our country has borrowed more than $15 billion dollars uh, for construction projects that are worth l less than far le far less than half of that amount, uh, uh, the reserves at the Bank of Zambia are depleted, and there are high levels of poverty. Uh, Zambia, despite borrowing these huge uh, sums of money, the household poverty levels are going at 60.4 percent, uh, far much higher than when um, Kenneth Kaunda had borrowed $9 billion and spending most of it uh, on feeding and educating his own people. Uh, but today, uh, the conversation for the future of Zambia uh, is reduced to the Boch privatization program uh, from nearly 30 years ago. Um, uh, you know, that's very sad to me how we are framing the issues of our time and solutions to the most difficult challenges the country is facing right now is to look backwards 30 years ago and try to, uh, to pinpoint uh, one asset uh, that we think was sold improperly. You know, uh, that's really sad. Uh, not to be demeaning or to sound as if uh, we know it all, uh, but we must have fidelity to facts in our conversation, in our discussions. The government of the Republic of Zambia under Frederick Chiluba, uh, with Edith Nawapi particularly as the Minister of Finance, did not carry out privatization in Zambia, as we know it. Uh, there was no financial research conducted into companies on sale. The bids were not properly vetted, and they sold those companies like sales in a pawn shop. Uh, but Minister of Finance, Vali Kwati Nivana Mariket, Pameni Baresh Chatomato. If what she said on radio and TV was true uh, this past week, how can you sell government property based on a single question chat with a consultant about the value of Intercontinental Hotel in Livingston? And that makes you to go ahead and close the deal on behalf of the government. Were you guys dating, you and the consultant? It's not fair, you know, to a country that 30 years after the fact, that's when you raise a quarrel with the people you are selling stuff to. That's not how we, we must frame the issues of our time or resolve the problems of our country. That's not the country. That's not, not the, how not the country should reflect on those issues. The main issues are what the current administration has done to the watchers that Mona was left with us. Mona was left $5 billion dollars. Uh, in, 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 in cash on hand and um, reserves in gold and, 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 and um, at the Bank of Zambia, plus $6 billion in debt that we didn't have to pay. But the patriotic front government under Mr. Lungu has depleted all of that money.
that one hour left and borrowed on top of that more than 15 billion dollars and spent it nearly all of it on cuts deals and constructions and that is and what is even a bigger problem is the way they borrowed the money it is also how they borrowed the money and where they borrowed the money for example although there must be questions on accounting for the proceeds of the euro bond the euro bond was a transparent date we can review its performance on financial markets in europe but the rest are subprime yuan bonds it means the bonds were not on competitive terms they were secured in dark corner meetings and are worth more than what we got out of them they are worth more than what we got out of them for example, uh, a project could be worth $250,000. Uh, then the secured UN bond was issued for $1 million. The country need to have people in leadership who know and understand how the global economy works, and particularly the simplicity of just how to use a calculator when you're dealing with national money. It, doesn't see, it seems to me that that wasn't the case with the MMD government, uh, our government declared, uh, another example I can give you just in, recent, in the recent past, our government declared that each fire truck uh, cost $1 million. And we know from insurance and the other, um, uh, the, 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 the fire tenders were actually worth $250,000 each. So the difference between the $1 million and the $250,000 is actually seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars the question we must ask our government is the difference between 250 and 1 million dollars per fire truck and they were 42 shy up we if we took seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and poured it into just one city that received the fire truck uh, we say okay uh, on top of the fire truck uh, we are going to also provide the $750,000 uh, into the economic activities of the city, into the economic and social activities of the city. We can uplift the standards of the people. We can lift the standards of living people. Those are the questions I believe that we need to be asking today. Um, or must we wait uh, 30 years from now for us to have another Nawakwi to come and ask those questions? They borrowed mainly from subprime yuan bonds lenders and spent most of the money on projects that are worth far less than the money they borrowed. That's where our eyes need to be looking. That's where the money is. The money and capacity that one of us are left has been squandered. Uh, we need to change players so that we as a country can audit, investigate, and find out where each loan came from, how it was used, who took what amount, and where the money went. Why have we spent $15 billion and the youth are still unemployed? Why are our people only spectators of constructions in their own land? So borrowings, why the majority of our, so much borrowing, so why are our people still in abject poverty? Where did the money go? That is the biggest question of our time and that's the biggest question of this election we need uh, that addressed in the zambia uh, must we wait for another nawak with 30 years from now uh, from today to find out where the money went if you fear privatization it's a distraction uh, people who know anything about money will tell you that the ignorant and embarrassing government did not even carry out privatization they auctioned companies to foreign firms. That, in applied economics, uh, is called foreign direct investment and the externalization of income. They sold the mines and other industries to foreign companies. And the rest is history. We, Zambia, has paid a heavy price for ukubika abatutu na bapuaka abashaishiva ukubonfiaka kileta kuntachi. Must we continue on this path? If a few Zambians were lucky to even own some of those companies sold by the MMD, that's what privatization actually is. 
It is a transfer of public companies into private ownership. And privatization means Zambians, individuals within Zambia, instead of the government starting to own and running those companies. Those individuals take those companies, buy those companies from the Zambian government and begin to run them for the good of the citizens. That's how the market economy works. That's not a scandal. That's what capitalist market is all about. Yes, but anti na 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 TV the other day, but 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 savaila sana na 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 apprentice degree, na apprentice degree yamu nineteen posokulu from the University of Zambia. The real question is, was she using a calculator as a minister of finance? Did she read the beads? What criteria other than the word of mouth for my estranged brother-in-law did she use to select the bidders? Those are the critical questions we need to ask for Zambia. Nangu, muamupatasha ni umu nenu. Nangu, nifi ya wala dakumushkiriwa mayatu kufuika mala yambushu umukoshu muntu. You cannot pin the failure of an entire government to an individual who was in the private sector. No. We, as a whole country, must refuse uh, to accept uh, this type of conversation and this type of discourse. Let us change the key players in the management of our economy. Let us, uh, and once we do that, let us now audit what has been done in the last 10 years and find out where the money has gone, why the money that was borrowed has not moved an inch in the levels of poverty, has not improved our education system. We have structures built by other people. And now the owners of the money have even sponsored our government with armored vehicles. Armored vehicles that are supposed to be in the armed forces now have been given to the police. What are they going to do? They are going to provide military support against the citizens to secure the money they loaned our country. That's what we must wake up to that. And we must be vigilant to see that.